So, just a wee recap of how this works. One minute mayhem. We've got lots of different speakers who will come up. They have 60 seconds to get their point across. And if they don't get their point across in those 60 seconds, I will squeeze my horn of power here um, and they will be sent off. So, let's see, who do we have up first? It's Linda. Linda, are you here? No, Linda? Oh, it's a shame. Okay, so, on to the next slide. Yeah, there we go. That's me. Um, not me, just building. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to come around? No, don't shoot yet. This is an object. I come from Bulgaria and it's a quiz. And if you win the quiz, you get five chocolate. You have to come and find me after coffee time. Guess what it is? Okay, great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, here. Microphone. And right. as usual, I'll be sitting intimidatingly close. So. Right. That's you go. Okay. Uh, I'm Libby Urquhart from Arch Network. Uh, a few of you will know me. You'll have been out on some of our projects. I'm just looking around. There's people who've been to Iceland and Bulgaria, uh, to Turkey, Latvia, it's up there. Uh, so we, we run Erasmus Plus projects. They're fully funded and they're to take people from Scotland to other European countries just to see what's going on, to share experiences and good practice. Um, these are Erasmus Plus projects. They're fully funded. They work through a Sc Scottish consortium. So we have members, Historic Scot uh, Environment Scot... Oh my God, it's going really quickly, isn't it? <laughs> so, anyway, we go, we go to all sorts of places. This is turf building in Iceland. Um, this is Sigurdur Björnsson, who's a tough builder. And you could go out there on one of these Erasmus projects and enjoy spending some time in Iceland learning how to build a turf house. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Amy Wolvin. I'm with the Tom and Tal and Glenavit Landscape Partnership. Uh, we're a HLF-funded project which starts started this year and um, we were run to September 2020. We have 21 partners as part of our partnership. We're located in the north of the Cairngorms National Park with three objectives to, kind of, uh, to improving and learning about and engaging with heritage. Heritage in our project is uh, all-encompassing to include natural and cultural heritage. We have 20 projects spanning from river restoration to habitat improvement, stabilising castle, recording built heritage and gathering memories and stories from the area, and many, many more in between. So we also want to encourage training in the area, and we have lots of training opportunities to provide new skills. And finally, I want to make a plug for the Tom and Tal and Glenda Discovery Centre, which will be opening in spring Easter time next year. So please come and visit us and keep in touch, because the sun always shines in Tom and Tal and Glenda <laughs> Right. Yeah, sorry, I do apologize. No, that's okay. That's great. That's great. Uh, friends of mine, my fort. Fiona, friends of I, my fort. First trans Italian fort in Britain. Neglected, unloved, not for long. As a community, we wanted to get together. We had a dream, envisaged wonderful things, working with the community, bringing it back to life. We had our dream, worked with the children, and our dream became a reality. It was just fantastic. We've now got um, the, the grass cut, we've now had skirmishes, we've now had walkings and talkings, and all sorts of the visitors, visitors coming to see us. One of the most exciting things is having the, the, the grass cut. So people can come easily to listen to the talks and walk with us. And we've got the most scrumptious display up there and we'd love you to come and see it because it's just scrumptious. Thank you. Excellent. Ten, ten seconds to spare. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Bess Rhodes and I come from a company called Smart History and I also work for the University of St Andrews. 
I want to talk about using mobile technologies to improve public understanding of challenging historic sites. I'm sure we're all familiar with the scenario where you've got a site of considerable historic importance, but the visible remains are fragmentary and a lot of the exciting artefacts have been taken to museums a long way away. And so it's hard for people to understand these sites when they visit. But mobiles are a possible solution. Today, a lot of content can be provided on mobiles. You've effectively got a tour guide in your pocket. You can have basic information about the site. You can actually have digital reconstructions of the site, including basic virtual reality experiences. And that's something we recently explored with a project on Edinburgh in the 1540s. You can also have scans of artefacts. And using this mobile technology, we can link up artefacts, interpretation, and the actual landscape. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be coming. Are you ready? No? No, that's not okay. Right. Okay. Go. Uh, Alan Miller, University of St Andrews. And I wanted to mention the Cine project, which is a new project that has got its Northern Periphery is an Arctic project with nine partners. As part as part of that. We're developing a virtual museum infrastructure. So the idea there is that there are lots of people who are interested in doing photogrammetry, drone footage, um, digital interpretation in all sorts of ways, shapes, and forms. And so we want to, we are making um, an infrastructure that makes it easy for a heritage group or a museum to make their own virtual museum. Um, so if anybody is interested in engaging with that project and would like some help in those sorts of areas, then we'd be like, delighted to talk to you. Um, also, we have a stall um, somewhere that you could find. <laughs> Okay, so special Rudy Graham, uh, I'm Rudy Graham and I'm the Gallic Officer for HES. And I just wanted to give you a very short snapshot into some of our current research, which is exploring some of the links between Gallic language and culture and some of our sites. This one focusing on Castle Hildroman, your Kildrummy Castle, and looking at uh, Alexander Stuart, the Earl of Mar. And this one focuses on after the Battle of uh, Inverlochy, Alexander was. Uh, shot, in the, shot in the leg with an arrow and he was away up in the hills upon the point of starvation when he happened upon two women who gave him a wee bit of barley which he then mixed with water in the sole of his shoe and ate and he composed this Gaelic verse that goes Sma an cochgere in tachgeris smerach an i tarachis id bieg fuerach yorna a sal mevroike in bieg a shara huad me vieg which translates as Hunger is an excellent cook, bad luck to him who sneers at food. A barley paste from the heat of my shoe is the best meal that I've ever had. <laughs> I'm Carol Primrose, by the way, and today's hat is Landhill Stables. Can I introduce you to Jim the Miner? Actually, he's a retired plumber. Um, he's a history and heritage volunteer at Landhill Stables, Glasgow, where we have funded staff running various social activities for local people living in a very deprived urban area. The History and Heritage Group recently completed an HLF project which also energised the local community. No longer funded, it still makes a huge contribution, running Doors Open Day and contributing both story and actors to the National Theatre of Scotland's smash hit Submarine Time Machine. It's currently taking the lead in Glasgow's Cultural Heritage Survey and the Antonine Wall Community Consultation. The volunteers do it for love, 
because they believe heritage is an equally important social activity. Okay, thanks very much, Fiona. Um, I'm sure we'll have a debate about whether it's two minutes if you're doing it bilingually. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'd like you to join me in thanking <clears throat> all of the Mayhemers and all of the other people.